We are changing the name of this channel. We're saving antennas from Hamfest junk heaps. What's a good power supply for a new ham shack? And can we make an emergency mobile HF antenna this time on Mailbag Monday? So first off, let's address the elephant in the room. I have decided, I've been thinking long and hard about this, to change the name of this channel. Uh, KNMRD radio stuff was just something that I came up with when I created the channel five years ago or so. Uh, I had to think of a name and that's just on a whim. That's just really quickly what I named it. But I've never really liked it. And I want, I've, I've, I've wanted to have the, the term ham radio in the channel name. And I'm finally going to do it. So I've decided to rebrand the channel as Ham Radio Tube. I think that's what we're going to call it from now on. And hopefully, just with search engine optimization, uh, that will help get this channel in front of more people and help us grow uh, at a faster rate than we are now. So thank you to all of you loyal K at MRD Radio stuff subscribers and fans and all that. Um, but we're going to try Ham Radio Tube. So let me know what you think down in the comments there. Does it suck? <laughs> Should I keep K at MRD Radio stuff? Uh, who knows? Guys, if you have a ham radio related question for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com. Today we have three great questions and one that made me, uh, it made me work harder than I, than I wanted to, to answer this, but let's dive right in. First, we've got just a, a great comment from a viewer saying, thanks for your videos. I had given up on my ATOS 100, but your video on the 120 saved the antenna from going to the next ham fest. He was going to get rid of it. It's going to be part of my portable station now using the Gable tripod with four 16 and a half foot radials. Seems to work well, that's great. Made two contacts on 40 this uh, morning. I'm sending pictures so you can see my setup. So let's take a look at this. This is awesome. So here, this is the ATOS 100, kind of the little baby of the, uh, the 120 that I have on my car. And how cool is this? He's got it set up with just that little Gable tripod that's got a SO239 coming out of the bottom. And it looks like he's removed the center uh, glass from his table to allow the coax to come up there. Not sure why the propane's there, but maybe to uh, to keep uh, <laughs> inquiring uh, people away. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'll set about fire. But that's really cool. So I'm really glad that you uh, were able to, to get that antenna to work. Yeah, they can be a little finicky, but once you kind of get the ins and outs and the little quirks of, of those antennas, man... They are great antennas, and that's a cool mobile setup. One of the guys in my club in Michigan, uh, John NU8M, used his ATOS 120 in a, in a similar situation to that. We'd go out for uh, field days and just portable outings and stuff like that. And He had good luck with it, so I'm sure you will do just the same. So thanks for writing in, thanks for sharing, and congratulations on being able to save your antenna. Apparently it's playtime. To the viewer who wanted more Satan in the uh, show, there he is. He's as active as he'll ever be. Next, we've got a great question that uh, probably a lot of new hams are wondering. He says, good afternoon, Mike. I'm in the process of setting up my shack right now. The only radios I have are a GT5R and a G90. Those are two great ones to start with. And hopefully in the future, an IC7300. Great choice. So now I'm looking for a power supply. I was thinking about buying an Astron RS35MAP. Do you know of any pros or cons for this power supply, or do you have any other suggestions? I respect your opinions, and I'm hoping you won't mind helping me with this. I don't mind at all, and let's take a look. Here's the Astron power supply. Looks like a pretty beefy power supply. It's a, it's, it's a 35 amp peak, really a 25 amp continuous uh, current power supply. Uh, I think it's selling for about 275 bucks. Doesn't appear to be a switching power supply, so it is going to be a bit heavier, uh, but not really a big deal because you're not going to move it anywhere. I like that it's got two power poles on the front, and it does have, uh, looks like, one power output on the back, just your typical lug nut kind of thing. So uh, I like it. It's a nice design. I've not personally used any Astrons, but they have a lot of great reviews on Amazon. And I know the brand Astron. I haven't heard anything say anything bad about them. So uh, you could just stop right there if, if you want to do that. But since you asked, my very first power supply, and this is hopefully going to help newbies and, and oldies alike. When I first got my ham radio license, this is the first power supply I got from Radio Shack, yeah, remember them? 
sucks they're not around anymore, but this is a 19 amp switching power supply. I got this to power my first kind of home uh, uh, 50 watt HF radio uh, or VHF radio, excuse me. And this worked great. I've, I've had this in service. I don't use it anymore, but this was in service for quite a while. Um, and it did a great job for me. It was very inexpensive. I think I paid like 65 bucks for it and uh, it worked great. The next uh, power supply that I got, when I bought my Yaesu 891 from r Electronics, they had a deal that they were selling it with this r power supply. This is the RLPS30M, and this is a 13.8 volt power supply. It's got a nice meter on the front, so we've, we've upgraded a little bit from the Radio Shack, uh, and it's got like a, a, you can switch from volts and amps, whichever the meter is monitoring. And one nice thing about this is it has this little shifter knob here. Now, as technology has gotten better, I've not experienced this, but I guess with older switching power supplies, they can actually be noisy on the HF band. So the idea behind this shifter is that it would kind of, and I'm not very well versed in this because I've never had any problems with this. I've, I've never seen RFI from this, but it would shift something and eliminate the RFI. <laughs> Electrical engineers are probably, <laughs> but that's my understanding of it. And it also has a 12 volt outlet here. On the back, it has just two lugs where you would connect your positive and negative. So great power supply, it worked well for me, nice and lightweight. And uh, I think it was, I think, I think these go for maybe 125, 150 bucks, something like that uh, from r Electronics. The next power supply I got, and I really like this, and I still use it to this day, is the MFJ4230 DMP. This is a really nice power supply. Uh, it's It's got, uh, what is it, 30 amp power supply. I forget what the, what the continuous, but probably 25 amps. Good enough for ham radio. It's got a nice digital readout of the voltage and the current draw, nice big screen. So it's, I mean, you can read it across the room. Uh, and I really like this one because it has a variable voltage. You can go all the way down to, I think, about 4 or 5 volts, all the way up to 16 volts. And this has now become my bench power supply. I'm always doing things uh, with different voltages and things. The, the LED lights that I have above my workbench there that I use for a lot of overhead shots are 12 volt uh, USB-C actually. So that powers my lights. I put it down to about 12.3 volts. If I need to power a radio, I can boost it up to 13.8 volts. Uh, testing things, whatever the heck you need to do, you've got a wide voltage. Another great thing about it, it has two kind of standard like banana plug, screwy type plugs on the front uh, if you need to connect something there. But on the back, it has two Anderson power pole connectors. And I want to see my connectors on the back typically, pre preferably both front and back. But if I'm going to wire things up, I want the wires out of the way, put it out of the back uh, and, and keep it nice and tidy. So that has been a mainstay in my shack for... Oh gosh, uh, I've had it for probably four and a half years now. No noise at all, no RFI, just a great switching power supply with a lot of options from MFJ. I think it's about $190 and well worth every penny. Now the power supply that I use in my shack to actually power my radios is a Yaesu FP1030A power supply. And really the only reason that I use this or I have this is when I bought my first HF radio when I got my, my general years ago, uh, I bought a Yesu FT450, and the guy also threw in uh, an MFJ uh, antenna tuner and this power supply for just a stupid low price. Uh, it's a great power supply. It's probably the same size and weight, similar features and, and benefits of that Astron. It's got meters that'll show you the voltage and the current draw, all that stuff. Um, it is not a switching power supply, so... Theoretically, they're going to be more RF quiet. I haven't had any problems with any of these, but that's been the uh, power supply that I've used. I kind of want to switch it out because it is big uh, and it just takes up room on my desk that I could honestly use for something else. Just the, the little table that it's sitting on, but they all work great. The, the moral of the story is honestly, unless you're buying a power supply these days, I think from like eBay or AliExpress or just any of that kind of Chineseium stuff, you're probably not going to have a problem with a power supply. The one thing that you want to keep in mind is 
What are you going to do down the road? You mentioned a 7300. So that Astron power supply, no doubt, will be able to handle a 7300. And maybe if you want to put like a 50 watt uh, HF or excuse me, VHF, UHF radio hooked up to that. If you're key down on both of them at the same time. So like if you're running 100 watts FT8 and you're and you're talking on the repeater 50 watts, you're going to probably exceed the the peak amp draw of those. Uh but that's probably not a likely scenario. So I think you're fine with the Astron. I know you're fine with the Astron, but there's some thoughts on some other uh, uh, power supplies for you. So thanks for writing in, and I hope that helps. Next, we've got a question on one of my favorite subjects, HF antennas. This viewer wrote, uh, this guy wrote me a long time ago, and I've been thinking about this. Something I haven't tried yet, but thought it might make a good video about testing unique emergency antennas. Try screwing a 3 8 inch bolt into your mobile mount and attach a wire instead of using a hamstick or similar mobile whip and attach the other end up to a tree, perhaps a quarter wave or a 5 8 wave of wire on the chosen banding using the car as the counterpoise. Just don't forget to remove the wire before you drive off. Yes, that would be... <laughs> Probably wouldn't be the end of the world, but you'd be without, uh, without wire. And as hams, we got to keep that sacred wire. So... I have spent a ridiculous amount of time on this, but to answer your question uh, easily, let's run outside real quick and do exactly this. So check this out. This is stupid easy. I was thinking to myself, well, I don't use the 3 8 24 thread anymore. I use the SO239 because I've got the uh, ATOS on here. But I had this banana plug laying around from I don't even know where. I'm like, well, what if I just stuck this in the center pin of the SO239? I wouldn't need a counterpoise because the outside of this, the shield, if you will, is already connected uh, to, the, to the trunk of the car from the trunk mount. So I'm like, well, what if we just did that? So I've got a length of wire here. This is 26 gauge spider beams wire, or spider, uh, who the heck are they? Soda beams wire, geez, I can't think. And uh, I've got a length for 20 meters. At the other end, I've got a little carabiner and I just twisted the wire. I cut it short once, but uh, added a little bit more wire. And uh, then we can just attach this to our telescopic mast and raise it up just like that. And you can lean this in a tree if you park next to some kind of structure. You can lean it against that if you have one of those drive over masts or drive over plates that you can stick the mast into. You can do that like. You're up and running in like, I don't know, 30 seconds. But now you're probably asking, yeah, but how good is it? Well, check this out. Let's sweep the 20 meter band. Oh, snap, 1.18. It's a little short. I could lengthen it a little more if I wanted to center it out there. But I mean, just a wire attached to the SO239 of a trunk mount on the car. I think that's pretty darn good. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that, right? Yeah, the closer to zero that X is, the, the more it is to resonant, but that's pretty daggum uh, good for just a emergency uh, antenna, I think. But I couldn't just stop there. I'm not leave one to leave well enough alone. So after I found out that you could, in fact, make an emergency wire just out of what we did, I spent like two whole days designing, 3D printing, uh, and trying to configure and tune a way to make that a resonant fan dipole, like a vertical car fan dipole. How cool would that be? So I started off with the idea that, well, maybe uh, we, if, if, if we make like a cage dipole, so I designed this little round thing in Tinkercad that I could just slide the wire in and make a, a cage dipole. And that kind of failed because it would it just kept wanting to twist and all the wires would interact with each other. Uh, if, if the wires were even touching at all, it would throw everything out of whack. So I went back to the drawing board, went back to Tinkercad, and I designed kind of a straight uh, separator to make a fan dipole, thinking that maybe if everything was just kind of hanging flat, it wouldn't twist up as much. Didn't have quite the problem with the twisting. It was still kind of a pain in the butt. It's really hard to keep tension on everything when it's vertical. So I'd probably need to add a bit of string to the end to, to keep it. I made 40, 20, uh, 12, and what did I do? 40, 20, 17, and 10, or excuse me, 12 meter wires. And 40 was just on point. I cut it for like 
10 meters, 4 centimeters, or 10 meters, 10 centimeters, something like that. Just tied a, tied a little knot at the end of it so I could hang it from the, from the hook. And 40 meters was just dead on. I could get 20 pretty, pretty accurate as well, uh, but 17 and 12 just weren't happy. Every time I cut one of those elements, it would throw everything else out of whack. Uh, I, I started adding length of the wire. I was shortening the wire. Just a ginormous pain in the butt. But I thought, what a cool idea would it be to have just a car portable vertical fan dipole where the car itself was the other half of the antenna. And uh, quite honestly, I spent two full days uh, out in the Texas sun. It was it was like 106 degrees one day and it was 109 degrees the other day, the day before. And just, I mean, several hours each day of just playing around with it and screwing around with it and trying to get it tuned and it just wasn't happening. But this is about the cheapest way you could ever make uh, <laughs> an HF mobile radio, I would say. So if you want to hop in your car, you know, if you got a VHF antenna, unscrew that, plug the banana plug in there and get some wire up in the air, lean the thing into a tree or however you want to set it up, throw a rope over a tree, however you want to get that wire up in the air. I mean, it works, man. That is that is awesome. So thanks for the idea. Thanks for making me spend two days in the hot Texas sun trying to get this to work. I'm not saying I'm giving up on it, but until it gets cooler out, I'm not playing around with it. So, hey, thanks for writing in, guys. Thanks, everyone, for your questions. If you have a ham radio-related question for me, shoot me an email, k at mrd at icloud.com, and we'll see you on another episode of Ham Radio Tube 73, guys. Booyaka! Booyaka!